NASA's playing chess while everyone else plays checkers. While Starship grabs headlines, Blue Origin just assembled their first Blue Moon test article, and the timeline is tighter than you think. Here's what the data shows. Starship requires at least a dozen refueling missions for one lunar trip. Blue Moon, single launch capability with proven partners like Lockheed and Boeing. The real story isn't about backup plans, it's about NASA hedging their bets in a race against China. Let's dive right in. Let me show you what happened while the world watched Starship explosions. Blue Origin posted something on X that seemed routine. First test article assembled and tested in Lunar Plant 1. Most people scrolled past it. Big mistake. That test article is a 66-foot diameter sunshield, one of the largest deployable structures ever built for space. It protects liquid oxygen and hydrogen fuel from solar radiation while generating 23 kilowatts of power. This isn't a concept drawing. It's flight hardware, assembled, tested, and ready. Here's what that means. While SpaceX is still proving basic orbital refueling, Blue Origin is building the actual equipment that will keep astronauts alive on the moon. Now, let's be fair to SpaceX. Their progress this year has been remarkable, but NASA's staring at an uncomfortable reality. Starship must accomplish things never done before at a scale that makes Apollo look straightforward. Transfer massive amounts of cryogenic fuel between multiple spacecraft in orbit. Land a vehicle the size of a skyscraper on the moon. Launch back off. And here's the number that keeps NASA administrators awake at night. At least a dozen refueling flights just to make one lunar mission possible. That's not my estimate. That's the architecture SpaceX proposed to NASA. In 2023, NASA awarded Blue Origin $3.4 billion for Artemis V. The press release called it a backup for SpaceX's Artemis three and four missions. But look past the PR language and examine the timeline. Blue Origin's uncrewed test flight, 2027. Their crewed mission shortly after. Meanwhile, SpaceX is still validating technologies that exist only on paper. Ask yourself this. If you were NASA, watching Starship's development with geopolitical pressure mounting from China, would you really put everything on the most complex spacecraft architecture ever attempted? Or would you quietly fund a parallel path that could actually fly when you need it? Blue Origin's approach strips away the complexity. Blue Moon launches on New Glenn, their own rocket that successfully completed its debut flight. One launch gets the lander to space. It meets Lockheed Martin's cis-lunar transporter in lunar orbit for a single refueling, then docks with Gateway. No dozen tanker choreography. No unprecedented orbital fuel depot operations. Just established aerospace engineering executed well. The partners tell you everything about NASA's thinking here. Lockheed Martin built Orion. Boeing constructed ISS modules. Northrop Grumman supplies cargo to the station regularly. These companies have put humans in space for decades. They know how to build systems that don't fail when lives depend on them. Blue Moon stands 16 meters tall, yet fits inside New Glenn's 7-meter payload, fairing through modular design. But the engineering choices reveal the difference in philosophy. The crew cabin sits at the bottom. Why? So astronauts can actually exit onto the lunar surface without rappelling down a multi-story ladder in bulky spacesuits. Details like this matter. Apollo astronauts struggled with ladder descent in one-sixth gravity. Blue Origin learned from that history. The propellant tanks mount on top, holding liquid hydrogen and oxygen for the B-7 engine. Days ago, CEO Dave Limp released a 17-minute video showing a complete burn test, the longest maneuver the engine needs to perform. His caption, with rocket engines, boring is good. In engineering, boring means reliable. Boring means it worked exactly as designed. Boring means you can stake astronaut lives on it. Blue Moon's capabilities match mission requirements precisely. In cargo configuration, 20 metric tons to the surface with enough fuel to return to orbit. Leave the lander behind, 30 metric tons. For crewed missions, four astronauts supported for 30 days on the lunar surface. That's quadruple any Apollo mission duration. Here's where Blue Origin's strategy separates them from typical aerospace contractors. They're not jumping straight to crewed flights. Blue Moon Mark I, the cargo variant, flies first. 
and it's not a scaled down test article. Mark I uses the same flight computers, avionics, reaction control systems, and power systems as the crude Mark II. Think of it as a full dress rehearsal with real consequences, but without human lives at risk. Every system gets validated in the actual lunar environment. The data from these missions directly improves the crude lander. The first Mark I is already assembled and in final launch preparations. The second delivers NASA's Viper rover to the moon's south pole in late 2027, where it'll hunt for water ice, crucial for future lunar bases. These missions have hardware, launch dates, and clear objectives. No vaporware, no artist rendering substituting for engineering. But let's address the elephant in the room. Blue Origin faces a serious technical hurdle, liquid hydrogen boil off. Hydrogen liquefies just degrees above absolute zero. In space's temperature extremes, it evaporates fast, often within 48 hours. Blue Moon needs hydrogen stable for a week minimum while astronauts work on the surface. Run out of ascent fuel with crew on the moon? That's everyone's nightmare scenario. Blue Origin's solution combines that massive sun shield with advanced multi-layer insulation. The shield doesn't just block radiation, it creates a thermal barrier protecting the propellant tanks. Plus, those solar arrays generate power for active cooling systems. Ingenious on paper, still needs proof in the lunar environment. This is exactly why the Mark I cargo missions matter. They'll test thermal management systems under real conditions, gathering data impossible to replicate on Earth. The other challenge, New Glenn reusability. The rocket flew successfully, but hasn't demonstrated booster recovery yet. Landing back on the launch platform for refurbishment and reuse. SpaceX proved this with Falcon nine years ago. Blue Origin needs to catch up here for long-term cost efficiency. Now let's talk honestly about what SpaceX is attempting. Starship isn't designed for the moon. It's a Mars architecture adapted for lunar missions. That's simultaneously brilliant and risky. If SpaceX succeeds, they revolutionize space access. A fully reusable vehicle delivering 100-plus tons to the lunar surface changes everything. Suddenly, building a permanent moon base becomes economically feasible. You could launch entire habitat modules, power systems, even pressurized rovers in single flights. But that if carries enormous weight. In-orbit refueling alone represents a challenge without precedent. Each tanker must launch, rendezvous precisely, dock, transfer propellant in microgravity, disconnect, and repeat a dozen times without failure. One missed connection or excessive boil-off cascades through the entire mission timeline. SpaceX has never demonstrated propellant transfer in space. Nobody has at this scale. They're inventing the technology while building the vehicle while proving the operational concept all simultaneously. That's peak SpaceX, audacious, innovative, and carrying risk that makes traditional aerospace engineers wince. For a program where geopolitical stakes couldn't be higher, that risk calculation matters. China announced they'll land Taikonauts on the moon by 2030. This isn't posturing. They've landed multiple rovers, returned lunar samples, built a space station, and executed every major milestone they've announced. Their program moves methodically, backed by substantial government funding and long-term planning that doesn't depend on annual budget fights. NASA's Artemis III timeline keeps slipping. Originally 2024, then 2025, now 2027 or later. Every delay gives China breathing room. The symbolic importance of being second back to the moon, or potentially getting there first, drives decisions in Washington. This geopolitical pressure is where Blue Origin's architecture becomes strategically valuable. It's less revolutionary than Starship, sure. But revolution isn't always what you need when racing against a determined competitor with unlimited patience. Sometimes you need something that works. Works now. Works reliably. Blue Origin's conservative approach might not inspire sci-fi movie scripts, but it's designed to put American astronauts back on the moon before China plants their flag. In that context, boring engineering starts looking pretty smart. Let's map the actual timeline. Mark I cargo mission launches soon. Second Mark I delivers Viper in late 2027. Mark II uncrewed demonstration flight also in 2027. Artemis V crewed landing follows. Each mission builds on the previous one. 
validating systems incrementally. Compare that to Starship's requirements before carrying astronauts. Achieve consistent flight reliability. Demonstrate orbital refueling with multiple tankers. Validate cryogenic storage for extended periods in space. Successfully land on the lunar surface. Prove ascent capability from moon to orbit. That's not a timeline. That's a gauntlet. SpaceX is moving fast, no question. But speed doesn't automatically translate to meeting NASA's schedule especially when you're inventing multiple new technologies simultaneously. Here's the question nobody in official channels will answer directly. What if Blue Origin was never really the backup? What if NASA looked at both proposals and thought, Starship's timeline is aggressive, even by SpaceX standards. We should structure contracts assuming they'll need more time. Give SpaceX Artemis 3 and 4 to drive innovation forward. Give Blue Origin Artemis 5 with a development schedule that reflects aerospace reality. If SpaceX delivers early, excellent. You get transformational capability ahead of schedule. If development takes longer, Blue Moon is ready to fly on a proven timeline. This isn't conspiracy theory. It's smart program management learned from painful experience. NASA bet everything on Space Shuttle and got burned. Shuttle was supposed to launch weekly and cost almost nothing per flight. Reality delivered something very different. Having Blue Origin as a credible alternative means NASA isn't held hostage to any single company's technical gambles, no matter how promising they look on paper. Remember that BE-7 engine video Dave Limp posted? 17 minutes of continuous burn doesn't make exciting YouTube content, but it demonstrates something crucial, endurance and reliability. Moon missions don't need Raptor engines raw power. They need precision, controlled burns, throttle capability, restart reliability. The BE-7 delivers exactly that with liquid hydrogen and oxygen. Proven propellants with decades of spaceflight heritage. Blue Origin tested without even attaching the nozzle, validating performance in both atmospheric and vacuum conditions. That's the methodical approach of engineers building systems meant to work perfectly the first time. Because astronaut lives depend on it. No explosions. No rapid, unscheduled disassemblies. Just an engine that fired for exactly as long as the mission requires, then shut down cleanly. Boring. Reliable. Flight ready. Both companies deserve recognition. That much is clear. SpaceX pushes boundaries in ways that could fundamentally reshape humanity's relationship with space. Blue Origin builds practical systems designed to accomplish specific missions safely within this decade. The real story isn't about which company is better, it's whether NASA's dual path strategy pays off. And watching current progress? That strategy looks smarter every month. Blue Origin just proved they can build complex flight hardware on schedule. Their lander design is simpler, more conservative, built on flight-proven technology. They have a structured test program with real missions and launch dates. New Glenn is flying. The BE-7 is firing. Hardware exists. Meanwhile, Starship attempts something unprecedented at a scale that gives veteran engineers pause. SpaceX might pull it off. They've exceeded expectations before. Their track record earns them the benefit of doubt. But if they don't meet the timeline, NASA has Blue Moon waiting, not as a distant backup, but as a parallel development ready to step up. That's not contingency planning. That's $3.4 billion insurance in a race where second place means losing to China. And when you're competing against a nation state with unlimited resources and generational patience, having insurance isn't just smart. It might be the difference between leading humanity back to the moon and watching someone else do it first. Here's the truth nobody's saying out loud. NASA just solved the biggest risk in space exploration, dependence on a single system. While SpaceX pushes revolutionary technology, Blue Origin delivers proven engineering. Both paths lead to the moon, and that's exactly the point. Blue Origin's hardware is real. Mark 1 launches soon. BE-7 engine is firing. Flight timelines are set. Meanwhile, Starship advances toward orbital refueling tests. By 2027, we'll witness which system puts American boots back on lunar soil first, or if both succeed, giving NASA unprecedented flexibility. This strategy ensures America beats China to the moon regardless of technical setbacks. That's not backup planning. That's winning. Now here's my question. 
Does simpler, proven technology beat revolutionary innovation in a space race? Drop your answer in the comments. I read everyone. If this analysis delivered real value, smash that like button. Subscribe to Space Hub and hit the notification bell so you never miss our deep dives into what's actually happening in space. No hype, just facts. The moon race is heating up, and Space Hub brings you the story behind the headlines. The future of human spaceflight is being decided right now, and you're watching it unfold.